Take your Bibles this morning, if you would. My uh, projector kept turning off during Sunday school. I suspect Michael was upstairs flipping a switch or something, messing with me. Uh, where can I tell you to go? Matthew chapter 3, turn there. While you're turning there, I'm going to start in 2 Kings and... I'm going to tie this together. I've been preaching on fruit bearing and what the Bible teaches about it. We have in Galatians the nine fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith, temperance. Against such there is no law, God said. Those are the things that are just manifested in us because we have a new nature in us. God's changed us. You start loving people that you were angry at. You realize, and you don't force yourself to do it. You can't force yourself to love anybody. It's, it's like forcing yourself to have temperance when the grandkids are over screaming. It's hard to take. Grandparents are old people who don't raise children anymore. Amen? Amen. So we send them home. Um, so forcing, forcing yourself to manifest fruit that isn't there doesn't work. Because it's not real fruit. It's not real love. Never is. And what we're going to find out this morning is that these things that are supposed to be in us, they come, they start with the seed, but they're there because of the root. Now I want you to ponder this. It's going to be a little psychology lesson too. And I'm not a psychologist. But I know the Bible, and I know a little bit about how things work in us. Especially... When it comes to children, what you want out of them will always be determined by what they're rooted in. Does not the root bear the fruit? Amen, Hunter. Let me say that again. Does not the root bear the fruit? You ponder that for a while. Because we'll spend lots of money going to see a therapist or a counselor or somebody with problems that we have. And I'm not saying anything against that. But what that therapist or that counselor or that doctor is going to try to work at, he's going to try to understand the root of the problem. If you just go out and pick dandelions out of the grass... What have you accomplished? Nothing. Because if that root is still there, they're coming back. That's the key. Finding out the root. 2 Kings 19.30 The remnant that has escaped to the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. That is exactly what I just said. The root, it is the root that bears the fruit. So if you find yourself in a position in life where you don't like the fruit that is manifested in your life, then get whatever it is rooted out. Rooted out. So they can't bear fruit anymore. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now, Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. Fruit comes from the root. Jesus knew this. John the Baptist knew it. The disciples knew it. The prophets knew it. David the psalmist knew it. Moses knew it. And we need to understand it. Matthew chapter 3 verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. And let me say this. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were the religious people. They already had a religion. But here's their problem. Their religion was not rooted in the Word of God. 
It was rooted in man's doctrine. Therefore, it was automatically doomed to corruption. A good tree cannot bear evil fruit, neither can an evil tree bear good fruit. You will never, you will never get good God's results out of life with bad religion. They say prayer's the key. Well, it depends on who you're praying to. Oh, faith is the answer. It depends on what you have faith in. If you've put your trust in the wrong thing, you will get the wrong fruit and it will happen every time. We do not expect in nature an apple tree to produce bananas. It never happens and it never will. So how can we expect good things to come out of evil things? Never works. So when many, he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O oh, generation of vipers, what does that tell you? That phrase, what does that tell you? It tells me, number one, Jesus didn't like those guys. I mean, if you go up to a bunch of Buddhists or Muslims or Catholic priests, and you get right in their face and say, hey, you're a generation of vipers. They're not going to like you for that. They're not going to be happy about it. And Jesus didn't care. Because he knew that what the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious crowd, was trying to do was corrupt the people and hold power over them. That's what he's, that's what he's trying to do. That's what's going on in politics right now. I think, it's, I think the fruit's being manifested, don't you? The fruit of bad governors and bad politicians is being manifested right now who wish and seek for no cause whatsoever to take away our liberties. And if you're one of those people that would trade in freedom for safety, you deserve neither. Somebody say amen. You deserve neither. Our forefathers said we'd rather live free or die. But you don't put us in bondage. You don't put us, you don't keep us in our houses. You don't tell us we can't come to church. And don't tell us we can't go to the restaurant. Don't tell us we can't go get our nails done. I knew I'd stir up some women folk around here. <laughs> oh, generation of vipers. Who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring therefore... So they wanted... Here's what they wanted. They, John's out to baptism baptizing everybody to Jordan River, and he's got thousands of people out there. The Pharisees and the Sadducees are losing their hold over everybody. So here's what they wanted to do, John. Boy, if we could get John the Baptist in with us, we'd take over those people. That's exactly what they wanted. So they come down. John, baptize us. And look what John said. I ain't baptizing you. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. I see these poor people coming down here with nothing. They come down here crying and they repent of their sins and I baptize them. God will forgive them. But you, I see nothing out of you except contempt for these people. So I'm not baptizing you. Let's see the tears flow down your cheeks. Let's see that you're really sorry for the wrong that you have done both to these people and to your, to your own kind. The wrong you have done. Then I'll baptize you. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able, now look at this, of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Peter called us, we then as lively, what? Stones. So what did God do? He took us stones and made us, doctrinally, Brother George, children unto Abraham. By faith. Because the seed of Abraham was corrupt fruit. Because they had a corrupt root. And they called themselves the Hebrew roots. Makes sense, doesn't it? And it's corrupt fruit. Never work. 
So God's able to these stones raise up children in Abraham. Verse 10. And now also the axe is laid where? Doesn't do any good to chop the branches off. Tree will grow new branches. Doesn't do any good to cut the tree down. Tree will grow back. The axe is laid under the root of the trees. So, everybody do this for a minute. Just kind of close your eyes. And I want you to think of five things in your life that ain't right. Or ten. Or twenty, if you want. But think of five things in your life that ain't right. Now, all of those things in your life have a root. You can look up. You can look up now. All of those things in your life that are not right and you don't like, they have a root to them, don't they? There's a cause for it. Now, I'm not going to psychoanalyze anybody. I'm not going to have you lay on my couch, tell me all, all your problems. But you can tell God, because I can't remove that root. But I know the Word of God can. He said that he would take their swords. This is our sword. And beat it into a what? What's a plow for? And it, turn, it pulls up roots, doesn't it? You take a hoe out to the garden for what? Root up weeds. Bending down and picking them doesn't work. They'll grow back. You got to get them from the root. You want them gone? Get them out. Get them out by the root. The axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast where? What do you suppose that is, Gary? Hellfire. That's hell fire. Okay? So let's go through the Bible here in a little bit. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I pray to God that you uh, add your blessings or give us your blessings. Take my mouth away. Let your mouth be the one that they hear. And Lord, I have nothing to give to these people except what you've taught in your word, what you've shown me in my life. And Father, I'm not going to dare stand up here as some master of my life. That I've got it all together and I've got it all working and I don't have any more problems. I'm not going to dare stand up over these people and give this to them. I am their equal in all things. I have roots to problems that have existed in my life for years. Manifesting rotten fruit. And I don't like it. So, Father, let your word be beaten into a plowshare, into a hole, a mattock. Whatever it is, Father, that you need to root out the issues that are in our life. If, Father, it must be by death itself, then so be it. Because we willingly, as Jesus did, we willingly lay down our life. We are crucified with Christ daily. If any man take up his cross daily and follow me. So, Father, we're willing to lay down our life for the betterment of your kingdom, the betterment of ourselves. Father, you said as the vineyard owner that you would purge the vine. Sometimes, Father, the vine's got a bad root to it, rooted out. We pray your help this morning in Jesus' name and all of God's people said... Amen. Look at Deuteronomy 29. Turn there. I'm going to have you turn these places in your Bible. And I want you to underline some of this stuff that you see in there. Deuteronomy 29, 18. The Bible said, Listen, there should be among you man, woman, family, or tribe. Watch this now. Whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God, and to go and serve other gods of these nations. Don't you ask the question, have you ever seen somebody fade out of church? You ever seen that happen? You ever see somebody just get out? They just, 
Their heart, here's what it is. Their heart gets turned. Their heart gets turned away. And they go out and serve other gods. Now that could be the gods of themselves. It could be the gods of this world. It could be other religions. But they go, they go away from the faith that was given to us. And they, they go away from that. And he said, they go serve other gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you, watch this, a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Does anybody here know what wormwood is? Huh? It's a bitter. They use it to concoct a liquor called absinthe. And absinthe is a bitter and it messes your head up big time. Okay? If you want some knock them out John stuff, that'll do it. Okay? It causes hallucinations. That's what it's there for. But it is a bitter drink. What did they give Christ on the cross? A bitter drink. Why? The Bible said he tasted death for every man. Death is bitter, is it not? Death brings bitterness, doesn't it? Or bitterness brings death. Who's ever been, you don't have to raise your hand, but I'm going to ask you this morning, who's ever been bitter? Bitter about something. Something that happened to you years ago. Something that somebody done to you years ago. And you're still bitter about it. You're angry about it. I, I'm not asking you to raise your hand because I think probably most everybody would and I don't want to make a spectacle out of it but you're gonna have bad people do bad things to you it's life and remember the fruit always comes by the root so if you've got a root of bitterness if someone did something to you, said something to you, took something away from you, caused something in you, whatever. There's going to be a root there, no matter what. No matter what, it's going to be there. And you'll find that bitterness is a very bad pill to swallow. And it's a load heavier than what you're able to bear. And I'm not, again, I prayed this, I'm not preaching above you today. So I got a few bitternesses of my own. People I'm mad at, people I don't want anything to do with, people I don't want to see ever again, people I don't want to talk to. But, I know how it works. Because I know that there's people out there that are bitter against me for the same reasons. So he said, watch out. Lest there should be among you a man or a woman or a family or a tribe whose heart turned away this day from the Lord our God. So what if, what if we had somebody in the church that had a bad root of bitterness against somebody else in the church. Would that only affect those two people? Not realistically. Would it not affect the whole body? Because you come in the house of God and you either sense that things are good or you always get a sense something ain't right. You ever been there? You ever had that? And you think, what's going on? What's happening? And you don't know what all's happened. You don't know what's been going on. But there's a root of bitterness. And it affects everybody. It affects me. When I know about it, man, I'm bummed out. Can't preach. Can't hardly do anything. I'm worried, sick about people. 
because you invest all this time in people's lives and souls, and then you know there's the chance that, boom, they're going to be gone. I've seen it happen over and over and over again. Isaiah chapter 5, turn there. Isaiah chapter 5. You young people, listen to your preacher for a minute. All my grandkids, listen, listen to your grandpa for a minute. Okay? All my children, listen to me for a minute. Uh, actually, listen to me for the next 30 minutes. If you're not careful, you, you may end up growing up despising church. You ever seen that happen? Adults who said, yeah, I used to go to church. We was Pentecostal. We went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, 15 times a week for revival services. I wouldn't give you a dime for a box of them. I ain't ever going back. Why? Something happened. Probably the hypocrisy that does exist in some churches drives people out and they say, if that's what that church is like, I'll never go to another one again. I've seen that happen. But it could be your own nature. Isaiah 5, 24. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff. Think about the example he's given here. How easy is it for fire to pass through a little old brown grass field? Boom! So the root shall be as rottenness. What does a rotten root produce? Rotten fruit or no fruit. And let me tell you something. Producing no fruit is the same as producing rotten fruit. In both cases, the Bible says they're cut down and cast into the fire. In both cases. So you can sit and be mad about what you think is the hypocrisy among everybody else and use that to justify your own hatred for God and His Word. You can use that as an excuse and say, well, I'm justified in not going to church and not reading my Bible because I, those hypocrites, I, I got mad at them, said I would never join them again. Now I feel like I'm better than they are because they're hypocrites and I'm not. You're still both going to hell. What difference does it make? For what reason? The root shall be as rottenness and the blossom shall go up as dust because here's the root now of it. Here's the root of it. They have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised what? The word of the Holy One of Israel. What Bible? That was written by men. I saw that on the History Channel two weeks ago. I read this on the internet. Did you know that the secret societies got involved in the Bible translations and the King James and they ruined it all? That ain't true. But that's what's out there. And that's put out there by men who wish to justify their own position and say, I don't believe in any Bible, but I'm a Christian, I believe in God. Those two don't mix. Those two don't, they're not the same thing. I don't read any Bible, but I believe in God. Then you don't know what you believe in. You're making it up as you go. So you can blame others or... The cause may just be that you decided you don't want to read it. You know why? Let me tell you, what you're, let me tell you what's going on. You're scared to death that something in that book is going to get you. And you ain't going to read it. That's why you don't want some people bringing certain subjects up. Because you're afraid they're going to say something that's going to get you and you don't want to hear it. Right? I said I wouldn't be a psychologist, but I kind of am today. Listen, I know life because I'm living it just like you are. And I know what happens. I know what happened in me dozens of times. Isaiah 14, turn there. Oh, I got something to show you. I got something to show you in a minute. 
I told you, I said it during Sunday school and I mentioned this. For some reason, God's got me studying the Branch Davidian Waco deal. Number one, our government broke the law. They said, they're abusing children in there. Well, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms does not have jurisdiction in child abuse issues. Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. That's it. And they raided that compound with the intention of a shootout. And I think there's more to it. They had no justification for breaching the walls of that compound with toxic explosive gas murdering innocent children they do not make gas masks for children do you know why their lungs are not strong enough to pull the valve so there are no gas masks in that compound and they knew that going in because what they wanted was, when the parents see the babies screaming in agony, they'll come out. That was their justification for it. And they slaughtered everybody in that compound, women and children. And they got away with it because Congress backed them on it. That's wicked. However, David Koresh holds the lives and the souls of those people as guilty for what he did to those people. I'm going to show you something you may have never seen before. Read, read, read Isaiah 14, 29. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's what? Out of the serpent's what? Root shall come forth a cockatrice. You know what cockatrice is? It, they say it's make-believe. I don't, I don't believe it. I think it's real. It was a feathered serpent. The cock part means chicken. A trice. And it was a feathered serpent. And those are all in your Bible. By the way, the Aztecs worshipped one as their god. Quetzalcoatl means feathered serpent. For the cockatrice and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. Now watch this. If you have a serpent's root, do you get Jesus out of it? If you've got a bad seed, do you get the sinless Son of God out of it? No! You get the Antichrist out of it. You get hell out of it. You get rottenness, corruption, sin, wickedness. You do not get good things out of bad fruit. Here's the flag that they made for the Branch Davidian compound. And they said, the explanation was, you see that was Star of David around that serpent? They said that was its wings. It's a cockatrice. That's the one they came up with. And by there's 666 in here too. There's 18 little sections in there. That's 6 plus 6, divided 6 plus 6 plus 6. Because Koresh called himself the sinful Messiah. And he was in there marrying 12 and 14 year old girls. Marrying them. I know what that is. Don't, and everybody else knows what that is too. That's perversion. Plain and simple. But you know what he said? I'm creating. He had 13 children of his own from different young girl wives inside that compound. And he said... I'm going to make 24 of them because they're going to be the 24 elders surrounding the throne of God. That's what we believe. He's wicked! And those people chose, they chose to believe his unbiblical revelations over the Word of God. They chose that. And some of them to this day justify it. They still believed that David Koresh was a prophet of God who was getting revelations from God. And it was his revelations that caused them to burn to death in there. Jeremiah 12. Verse 1. Now, listen, I'll say this. 
and hopefully say it till I die. If you become convinced one day that I am erring significantly from this book, walk away or throw me out. Please. Don't follow me. Don't do what I say. Don't do something because I said do it. Or don't think something's right or wrong because I said it's right or wrong. It's either right or wrong by the word of God or it's not at all. Jeremiah 12, 1. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me walk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore all, are all they happy that deal very treacherously? How did Bill and Hillary get away with all that stuff? Huh? Robert? Why aren't they in prison? They should be. That's, that's them right there and a bunch of others like them. Wherefore did the wicked, the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root. Watch out for that. They grow, yea, they bring forth what? The root always bears the fruit. You know what we did? Do you know what we did? We voted for those idiots. We voted them in. We voted wicked people in and they stole all the money and they held power over us. That's why they won't let anybody go to church in their state. So, I guess in some ways, some of these people, some of these people in this country are getting what they wanted. They're getting what they voted for. Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root, yea, they grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. Nancy Pelosi said, I pray for Donald Trump. Yeah. Oh, my God. Would you spare me? God is near in her mouth, far from her heart. Matthew 15, turn there. Verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which with goeth into the mouth defileth a man. Somebody say amen to that. Oh, you shouldn't eat bacon, Brother Mike. You shouldn't eat McDonald's. You shouldn't eat Chinese food. Chinese gave us a... It wasn't a Chinese restaurant that gave us a virus. They gave us Kung Pao chicken. Then came his disciples, said unto him, Oh, let me finish that. But that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. And ask yourself the question, if it came out of you, why did it come out of you? Because it was rooted there. It was sown in there and rooted there. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? You offended them! But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Underline that. Underline that in your Bible. Mark that. Write that down somewhere. Here's, here's your hope. Here's your hope. I asked you to close your eyes a while ago and think of things in your life that you didn't like, things that were not right. They got planted there somehow, some way. Maybe the devil put them there. Maybe they just laid a trap for you to ruin you later on. I've seen it hundreds and hundreds of times with people that early on in childhood you can tell the devil just really tried hard to work against them for some reason then they ended up serving God but struggling with things I've seen it over and over again and maybe that's you but here's your hope if God didn't plant it in you be certain he's going to root it out Turn to John 15. Let's go back to our original base here for the, the teaching. John 15, verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. And, and he said in verse 2, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he what? Purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So as a good vineyard owner, John can tell you about this. He spent his time going through the vines 
And if there's a bunch of weeds gathered up around it, what'd you do about it, John? Root them up. Well, that takes work. Don't you want grapes? Don't you want good things? Don't you want God's blessing in your life? Rest assured that if you are God's people, He will not tire, but He will root out the things in your life that are not good for you. Let Him do it. Let Him do it. Let Him take some of your family away. Whoops. Ross is going, oh, it's already happened with me. <laughs> let them go. Don't be bitter about it, but let them go. God did it for a reason. God will purge a family. God will purge a church. But here's what he'll do. He'll let it grow and manifest itself before he does. So that when everybody sees it, they go... Yeah, I see, I see now why God did that. Rest assured, God will do it. 1 Timothy 6, look at here. Turn your body, oh, turn there, turn there, turn there. Here's, here's the problem. Here's our problem with our nation right now. This, this Bible's right. This Bible's right. The other modern English versions replace the word the with a. Now, I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you where in a minute. For the love of money is a root of all evil. No, it's not what it says. So you see now the difference. It is either a root of evil, but there's other roots of evil, or it is the root of all evil. Do you know the devil loves money? He loves money and bling and merchandise. He's the opposite of Christ. Christ didn't walk around, big crosses on his neck, big gold chains, big gold rings with his Rolex. The way, who was it described in this way? They surmised since Judas held the bag that Jesus must have had a big load of money. And Jesus would have wore diamonds and he would have wore gold and he would have drove in a big hearse. Uh, what am I thinking of? A uh, limousine hearse. <laughs> limousine. He would, have, he would have done all that. He would have had many houses everywhere. But he didn't. You know, and the thing. The Son of Man has not a place to lay his head. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You have sorrow in your life, right? I don't know how to say it. But I will just guarantee that the root of every evil is covetousness and the love of gain. What's driving wicked politicians? The love of gain. Businesses. I believe, I'm a capitalist. I believe in capitalism. I'm not a socialist or a commie. Unrestrained capitalism damages the system. Hebrews 12, 14, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail. Look at here. This, is, get back to the, this gets back to the Wormwood deal. Lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Turn to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Um, while you're turning there, just very quickly, do you all want to meet back at 3 instead of 4 today? Raise your hand if 3. Raise your hand if 4. 3. It'll be 3. All right. Mark chapter 4. Look at what he said. This is the parable of the seed and the sower. And so look at what he says. Verse 16. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness, and have what? 
No root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are, what is the word? Offended. Have you ever been offended in church? I have. I've been offended by people here. But this place is more precious to me than my feelings of bitterness. And I can't be and remain bitter at the people that God has given me to serve. You can't do it. You can't wash their feet and hate their guts. So here's what happens. Some people come in church for a while. They get upset at something that the preacher said that was in the Bible. For the word, it said they get offended for the word's sake. That means they got mad at God for what was in the Bible. They didn't like it. And they quit. No root. No fruit. It's that simple. Jude 1, 12. Am I done? Not quite, but I'm going to have to quit. Well, I got a lot here left, left to go. By the way, that teaching I did on fasting and prayer, I'm going to have to redo it. The recordings got busted up somehow. Devil fought us all day last Sunday. Jude one twelve. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding with themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about with winds. Truths whose fruit withereth, whose without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the... You know what it means to be twice dead? Let me explain this. It means you have already gone across God's line. And He has already counted you as a candidate for the second judgment, the last judgment. You know what that is? The judgment of the damned. But you're still walking around in flesh. And God already sees the outcome of your life and He has already marked you as died twice. Meaning, no redemption. Who wants that? I mean, I've had God mad at me. But I'm thankful that He's not marked me down as already reprobate. Twice dead. Um, I'm not going to keep going. Let me read Proverbs 2.22 and we'll close. The wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Mark God's word. All these people that are living lascivious, wicked lives. Whether they get held accountable in this life or not, God's going to get them. Every one of them. He's not going to let Michael Jackson get away with anything. He didn't let Charles Manson get away with anything. He's not going to let OJ get away with anything. He's not going to let Bill and Hillary get away with anything. He didn't let Jeffrey Epstein get away with anything. Everybody said, well, he cheated. The Je no, he didn't. He had to stand before God. And God got him. Cursed be anyone who hangs, the Bible says. And I'm just telling you, God's going to root him out. Let him root out what's eating you up. Let him do it. Fair enough? Let's bow our heads. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say to you this morning, if you want to come down to one of these benches, if God's dealing with you about something, you just want to pray, hey, it doesn't even have to be anything I preached on. So if God's dealing with you about something and you just want to come down and pray, I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to ask you to come down and, and mind the Lord. Don't mind me, mind the Lord. Don't do it because I said do it, but if God's telling you to do it, I want you to give you this opportunity.
If God's eating you up about something, something going on in your life, and you can tell that God's ready, He's wanting to root something out so it doesn't come up again. Or maybe there's just something God's dealing with you about. God's, God's got you, okay? Whatever it is. Father, we come before you today and we're very, very thankful that you spoke to us this morning. And Father, I pray to your God that you would help everybody forget anything that I said except if it was what you said. I pray to your God that you would help us overcome the bitterness, overcome the envy, the hatred, the jealousy, retribution, thoughts of vengeance. Help us to overcome, dear God, the whatever root that causes us to lust after things or after people. Father, root that out of us. We want to bear righteous fruit for your kingdom. But we know, Father, that the devil sowed wickedness in us years ago. And that wickedness got rooted in us. And it was only by your grace we were able to come out of it. So, Father, by your grace, root out what's wrong with us. Pluck it up by the roots. Lay the axe down to the roots. Plow it up, break it up, break up the clods. Get the rottenness out of us, Father. Help us to love as you do. Forgive us, Lord. Bless our country, bless our church. Bless each one of us, Lord, that have heard your word. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? Appreciate you coming this morning. Good to be in church. Amen. Pray for those. Hey, pray for those that still aren't able. Uh, pray for those that are still worried to come. I understand it. I get it. Um, the media has incited so much fear in people. And we got doctors now all over the country coming out and saying, uh, this ain't right. Got doctors saying, uh, we were told to put, we were, they said it in Chicago, they said it at the Illinois News Conference. They asked Governor Pritzker a question. He deferred to one of his staff and the staff said, if they come in to us and if they're in hospice, if they're in hospice, they're going to be dead in four days anyway, but they test positive for COVID, we put down they died of COVID. If they died of a gunshot wound, and I've got the clip, I'm going to play it Tuesday. If they died of a gunshot wound, but they tested positive for COVID, we put COVID down on death certificate. That ain't right. That's ain't right. Amen. <laughs> what? The reason they're doing that, they're getting $39,000. Sure it is. What is it, Ron? The love of? Money. That Bible's right, isn't it? Amen.